What happened to the Eagles' pass rush? A year after leading the league with 70 sacks, the Birds' defense was tied for 15th in sacks with 40 coming into Week 16. For a team that invests so much on their front, that steep drop-off is concerning as the playoffs approach. The answer to the question of what happened to the Eagles' pass rush is multifaceted. First, we'll start with how the unit is working as a whole before looking at the individual parts. As a group, this unit isn't rushing well together. When one person pressures the quarterback off of his spot, too often another person isn't there to help clean up the play, or someone loses contain, or has bad rush lane integrity, and the quarterback extends a play. This is highlighted by their low pressure to sack ratios. Every grading service tracks pressures differently, but both Sports Info Solutions and Pro Football Reference have the Eagles 24th or worse and percentage of pressures that turn into sacks. Both services have the Eagles around average and pressure rate. Let's look at a couple examples. Here, Jalen Carter is a three technique, and with the line sliding the opposite way, he has a one-on-one. -on -one. The guard oversets, trying not to get beat outside, so Carter tries to use his patented inside club to counter, but the guard mirrors him well. After getting stopped initially, he tries to use a club again, and gets washed way too far inside. At the same time, Reddick wins on the edge and forces Purdy to step up, but with Carter pushed to the opposite side of the line, he opens up a huge lane for Brock Purdy to scramble. When you get a one-on-one -on -one as an interior rush, you're afforded more freedom to move inside or outside while trying to attack the quarterback, but you still have to maintain some control over your rush lane. I love seeing Carter's effort after his first move failed, but after that first move doesn't work, he needs to work back outside or try to collapse the pocket with a bull rush. He probably falls into a sack here if he maintains better rush lane integrity. On a different play, we see Fletch get pressure by pushing the center into Dak Prescott's lap. This time, Josh Sweat was rushing as a three technique over the guard, and he gets caught up inside even though he should be working out to contain. Dak is able to escape outside. Sweat had a good chance of getting a sack from the pressure Fletch generated if he kept contained. Let's look back to last year. We see Sweat rushing from a similar alignment again, but this time he works back outside for contain. Sweat wins his rep on the outside, but he's also helped out by the fact that the interior pressure from Reddick doesn't allow Ryan Tannehill to step up in the pocket. Good players generate consistent pressure. Good defenses turn those pressures into sacks. Sacks are as much of a team stat as they are an individual stat. The unit has to work together as a group to turn those pressures into sacks or else the good quarterbacks will find room to operate. The Eagles have been too inconsistent in that area this year. I'd like to say this is something they can fix quickly, but I've highlighted this issue as early as week four. Let's look at some individual players. I'll start with Jalen Carter. He's had a great rookie year, and several times this season, he has put reps on tape where he looks like he can develop into the all-pro pass rusher that scouts believed he could become. Whether he's beating double teams, transitioning to secondary rush moves more quickly than most veterans can, or making blockers look silly with his power and inside counter moves, Jalen looks like the real deal. His stats back that up, as he's in the top 10 or 20 in several stats such as pressure rates and pass rush win rates. Having said that, he's still a rookie, and he's not as consistent or polished as the top pass rushers in the NFL. The games with his highest pressure rates came early in the season. Many of the offensive lines he was terrorizing were starting several backup or rookie guards and centers. As the season has gone on, he's faced better offensive line groups, especially on the interior, and his overall pressure numbers have taken a dip as well. In addition to that, now that he has more reps on tape, teams have a better grasp on how to block him. He's a very strong player, but he's also a bull in a china shop sometimes. When bull rushing, he often puts his head down and gets his weight too far forward. This allows him to play with good leverage and helps him generate a lot of power, but teams have started using a snatch technique where they just grab the back of his shoulder pads and push him to the ground. I first noticed teams doing this to him starting in week four. He often has his hands too wide, allowing offensive linemen to get their hands in his chest and control him. It makes him a fraction of a second too slow when it comes to hand fighting. Getting his hands tighter will help his strike timing so he can prevent offensive linemen from getting their hands on him. Some people think his slowdown is due to fatigue. I think it has more to do with facing off against better competition and teams adjusting to his play style. He has shown dominant reps against the best interior offensive linemen that the league has to offer. He just needs to increase his consistency to be in the same conversation as the game's top interior rushers. I think the Eagles should do a better job of getting Carter some one-on-one -on -one opportunities as he's getting double teamed a good amount, but I'll save that conversation for an article on my website. If you haven't checked out the website already, make sure to visit. I have content that will be posted exclusively on there and will touch on topics and conversations that I don't normally get to on YouTube. Switching players, Josh Sweat has had a down year when compared to his breakout season in 2022. He had a career-high 11 sacks in 16 games, though that's really 15 when you consider he didn't even finish the first drive of the Saints game. He's at 6.5 sacks through 15 games this season. While I think Sweat is a very good pass rusher, I don't think he's in the tier of great pass rushers. He was able to pick up a lot of sacks against an easier group of left tackles last season, and a number of his sacks came on stunts where someone helped give him a free lane to attack the quarterback. To be fair to Sweat, he has 
has had to face a gauntlet of left tackles this season. Trent Williams is going to be a Hall of Famer. Tyron Smith has played at a Hall of Fame level when healthy, and Tristan Wirfs was a top three right tackle before successfully switching to the left side this season. Take PFF grades with a grain of salt, but it's a good indication of the players Sweat has had to go against. Out of 92 qualifying tackles, left or right tackle, when looking at pass blocking grades, Sweat has had to play seven games against the top 20 tackles. Another three were against top 30 tackles. Only five games has he been primarily matched up on tackles ranked 40th or below, matchups in which he largely dominated. With Reddick on the other side, they don't need to move Sweat around to give him the better matchup. They do move those guys a little bit, but they mostly line up in the same spot every game. It's almost comical to look at the difference in right tackles that Reddick has gotten to go against this season. He has faced zero games against a tackle with a pass blocking grade and the top 20, one game against the top 30 tackle, and four other games against the top 40 tackle. 10 of his 15 games have been against tackles with a pass blocking grade that didn't rank in the top 40. I don't think we should be all that surprised to see Sweat have a regression in his pass rush numbers considering who he has had to go against. He still had reps where he's beaten the likes of Trent Williams and Tyron Smith, but guys with Hall of Fame talent don't get beat often, regardless of who they're going up against. That doesn't mean Sweat isn't without criticism. He's a speed rusher, although he does have some power to him. But this season, he has relied on a lot of his speed moves. He uses a lot of swipes, clubs, and chop moves, trying to knock down the outside hand of the pass blocker so he can capture the edge. He has one of the best get-offs in the league and also uses a Euro step to try to help soften the corner. But offensive linemen are often using vertical sets and trying to take away the outside hand so Sweat can't get to it. Here we see Deion Dawkins take a vertical set, retreating deep so that Sweat doesn't have as good of an angle to get outside. He then loops his arms around and outside so Sweat can't get to his outside hand. Sweat flashes a long arm to try to bait Dawkins to show his hands so he can dip under with a ghost move, but Dawkins vertical set doesn't give Sweat the angle he needs to bend the corner. In situations like this, where Dawkins is gaining depth quickly, Sweat should convert from speed to power and bull rush him back into the quarterback. Dawkins looping strikes give Sweat his chest as well, making the bull rush an easier move to use. Using more bull rushes can help set up outside moves as well. Instead of continuing to get depth, the tackle has to prepare his feet to anchor. By putting more bull rushes into his repertoire, Sweat can help himself capture the edge when he does use his speed rushes. Right now, tackles are waiting for him to try to capture the edge and ignoring the bull rush. Reddick is still a very good pass rusher as well, but like Sweat, I wouldn't put him in the elite tier. He's 15th in the league with 11 sacks and has been very consistent, getting to double-digit sacks four years in a row. Still, outside of last season, another where he faced an extremely easy schedule of offenses and tackles, he hasn't reached the high teens and sack totals like the elite guys consistently do. Using PFF's pressure stats, out of 123 qualifying edge rushers, he's 45th in pressure rate, BG is 44th, and Sweat is 54th for comparison. Keep in mind that the difference in tackles Sweat and Reddick have faced this season. He can be a bit streaky in terms of pressure, mostly due to the fact he's not a complete rusher due to his lack of size and strength when compared to elite pass rushers. Still, he is a very good pass rusher. I would like to see Sweat and Reddick rotate a little more in certain matchups. There are certain pass protectors where Reddick's quickness allows him to attack pass rushers in a better way than Sweat, and certain matchups where Sweat's preferred pass rush styles would shine more than Reddick's would. I know there's some talk of Sweat and Reddick being worn out from high usage, and while that could be playing a factor, Reddick is 16th and Sweat is 18th in snaps by an edge rusher. They've played around 100 snaps less than edge rushers like TJ Watt, Daniil Hunter, and Kayvon Thibodeau, and almost 200 less than Max Crosby. Top edge rushers play a lot of snaps for a reason. I don't buy the snap counts as the excuse for the drop off in production. I think that has more to do with the schedule of teams that they've faced recently. Having said that, I do think Brandon Graham should get more playing time to give those guys a breather. He's one spot ahead of Reddick in terms of pressure rate and second in sack rate among the Eagles defensive front. In regards to the other defenders on the team, Fletcher Cox is still playing at a high level at his age, but he's not the dominant force he once was. He's 41st in pressure rate among 129 qualifying interior defensive linemen using PFF's pressure stats. Jalen Carter is 11th for comparison, which is why I mentioned they should work to get Jalen Moore one-on-ones. Milton Williams and Jordan Davis have always been better run defenders and pass rushers, with pressure ratings ranking 71st and 76th respectively. They've both shown flashes that make you think they can become good pass rushers, and they both have physical traits where can envision them becoming dominant when they can maximize those traits, but for the time being, they're inconsistent. Nolan Smith has been a disappointment to many, but to be fair, that's mainly due to people having outlandish expectations for Smith based on his 40 time at the Combine. In reality, he didn't have much experience as a pass rusher when compared to fellow first round picks, and his skill set was very raw on tape. All three of Williams, Davis, and Smith are very young players, and it took Brandon Graham and Josh Sweat several years before they really started putting it all together. The truth is, most players in the NFL 
don't come into the league as high-end players. The Aaron Donald, Micah Parsons, Jalen Carter pass are rare. We also need to factor in that the Eagles had an extremely easy schedule last season that inflated some expectations. I touched on this in an article on the website about the perils of an easy schedule, but think about this. The Eagles played eight games against the bottom six teams in terms of combined sack and pressure rate last season. 40 of their sacks came against those teams. They haven't had as easy of a run this season. And of course, getting better on the back end should help them get more coverage sacks, though it's not as if every quarterback is getting rid of the ball immediately when playing this team. When I look at this pass rush and factor in that the Eagles are playing a lot of first, second, or third year players in their front, and they faced a much more difficult schedule this season, it's not all that surprising they've dropped off in sack totals. Fletcher Cox made a great point. Jalen Carter, Milton Williams, Jordan Davis, and Nolan Smith combined don't have more years in the NFL than Fletch does. There's trade-offs with relying on a mix of aging guys and young players like that. In addition, while I think Jalen Carter can get there, I don't think the team has a true dominant game-breaking player on their roster right now. Reddick and Sweat are very good, but in certain matchups, they can be mitigated. Long gone are the days of Fletch being the second best defensive tackle in the league. BG didn't break double-digit sacks until last season. Jordan Davis is a run stuffer that plays primarily on early downs and non-obvious passing situations. Milton Williams is a better run defender than pass rusher at this point, and Nolan Smith needs time to develop. I wouldn't be surprised if the Eagles are looking for ways to upgrade their defensive line this offseason. In the meantime, I think the best path forward this season is tightening up on their rush integrity and implementing more ways to get Jalen Carter one-on-one -on -one opportunities. They will need to get more pressure if they're going to survive the playoffs.